Welcome everyone to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, a spin-off game of, you know, the Final Fantasy series. So, this came to me. It is really interesting. I like it a lot. It's really cute, but at the same time, it's really well made in my opinion. So, I like it, and hopefully you enjoy this Let's Play as well. Like I said, it's a spin-off of the main series, but just because it's a spin-off does not mean it's a bad game. In fact, I actually think it's a pretty good game. So, I'm gonna enjoy it, and let's just hope you all enjoy this game as well. So let's do a new game, and here we go. I think it begins with like a, a song intro or something. Single player, multiplayer, single player, obviously. Because multiplayer is freaking like Game Boy Advance that you gotta use, which is really strange. Because <laughs> back in the day, I guess it was a norm. But anyway, it's gonna begin with like a music, soundtrack, intro, so I think I'm just gonna be quiet. Now that is one way to get somebody pumped up for a game, I must say. When I first saw that, you know, this game came out back in what, 03, 04? I saw that and I was like, wow, I'm pretty mind blown about this, I really am. So, come, let us record your adventures in this journal, it shall be known as the Crystal Chronicles. But first, we must know the name of your hometown. Okay, you know what, I had this as a joke in my Harvest Moon uh, Let's Play, so I'm just gonna do this. 
Wait, dude. I forgot to erase the other thing. Okay, it's called Tiba, but I'm gonna call this C S U L B because that is the university that I go to. Okay, dude. How do you go down? There we go. C S U L B. That's my village name. Oh my god, this music too. The nostalgia. The nostalgia is returning. It's been years since I played this game. Year one, the morning of my departure was here at last. I tried to brace myself for the journey ahead. There was a field along the main road where I decided to camp until sunrise. Tomorrow, I set out in search of myrrh. Okay, so... That music probably didn't really, like, you know, the whole music intro, the introduction there. It probably didn't help a whole lot, you know? Or maybe it did, I don't know, it depends. I'm just gonna begin by saving the game now, slot A. Accessing. Save, please. Does it really take this long to save? What the hell? Does it really take this long to save? Oh shit, I guess it does. Okay, so... Basically, this game... Um, actually, okay, before I talk about the game, hold on. Options first. Position markers. On. Sound mode. Stereo. Music. That's... whatever, that's fine. Sound effect, that's fine. And GBA, okay. That's all good. Okay, any other quick things that I need to... Okay, screw bring a friend, because that's for, uh... Importing a character with another memory card, which I'm not going to be doing. Diary, you can simply be your diary entries, you know. As of now, we only have one diary entry. Let's go to set out. Okay. So basically, you have to make characters in this game. Yes. And let me just be honest with you. You can be really successful in this game by making only one character. And giving all artifacts to that one character. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing. So when you make a character... Oh god, what am I going to call myself? Shiny? I guess so. Let's go with Shiny. Okay. Male or female? I'm going to go with male. Okay. So here's the thing. When you make any character, you get four races. A Clavit, a Lilithy, a Yuke, or a Selkie. Basically, Clavits are very well balanced. Very well balanced classes. Lilithy's folk or Lilithy, sorry. Lilithy's focus... Little teeth. <laughs> Little teeth focus on uh, strength. You know, strength. That's pretty much what they do. High damage dealers. Yukes focus on magic. They're magic casters and magic defense users as well. And Selkies focus on... Actually, they're pretty similar to Clavits from what I last remember, but... I don't know. I always thought of these two as like, the, like well balanced or something. And then these, like strength and that magic. I don't know. I'm going to be going with the Little Teeth though. Bearhead, Horn Helm, Steel Visor, or Buckethead. So you can basically put whatever you want. I'm gonna do with Bearhead, I guess. Yeah, that's how the Bearhead looks. You can go back and then go to like Horn Helm. Looks pretty cool. Steel Visor. Oh man. And then Buckethead. <laughs> I just like the normal one. Bearhead, because like, I mean, there's a lot you can do, you know, but. Wolfie. Shark Eyes. Bandana. Huh. Raccoon Tail. Eh. Whatever. Let's go with Lil T. Lil T. Bearhead. So you can select your occupation, basically. I'm gonna go with, um... Oh, man. So there's eight different ones that, uh, because you can make eight characters, only one character per occupation. So I'm gonna go with a, uh... Maybe Blacksmith, maybe? I guess so, let's go with the blacksmith. Yes. There we go, that's your character made. Okay, let's go ahead and select our character now, so as you can see, we start with four hearts. Okay. Today you finally step out into the world in search of myrrh. You come safely back to your CSULB, alright? <laughs> Should you find any materials for smithing, bring them back to us. We'll forge you a fine weapon. Don't worry. I'll take care of our of mother and father. We'll miss you. Be sure to eat well. Hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Shiny, the blacksmith's son, is sent off by his father, Lyle, his mother, Callan, his brother, Kilf, and his sister, Cal. Anytime you make a character, you're gonna get this, you know, like, little character development, you know, I guess, with them. Pretty cool, I guess. I like it. 
But anyway, time to actually begin. So I honestly think that this game drew inspiration from the Oregon Trail quite a lot because it looks a lot like the Oregon Trail. So you can move wherever you want with your caravan. So as you can see, this town that we're currently at, it's called CSULB. It's our hometown. So I'm just going to enter it to explore it for a little bit. So one thing you're going to be noticing is that in this game, it's really about the whole like poisonous poison world against the crystals. The crystals are the ones that essentially protect the towns in this game. So let me go to, uh, oh yeah, by the way, any occupation that does not have anybody yet, you'll have these little guys. And so that nobody's home right now. So yeah, the more characters you make, uh, they're all going to be filled up pretty much. Look at that, so that one's taken, or not taken as well. I don't know where I'm at, but I'll, I'll see. Oh look, here's, here's my friend, or my brother, I should say. Here's my family. Hello, family. Anyway, these guys are always here, the old lady and old man. Come back home and show us your smile once in a while. <laughs> okay. So yeah, do you see this huge crystal here? These crystals, you'll, you'll be seeing them pretty much uh, in every single town in the game. The crystals are essentially what protects the, the towns from the, I guess, the dark poisonous thing and whatever in this world. In this world, if you ever step foot outside without crystals, um, you're gonna take damage slowly but surely, and that's not good. Let's go ahead and examine. Step inside, sure. This right here is a little secret. Okay, so you're gonna be finding places like this. It's very strange. Koopo, you're here for the mock stamp, right? What's a mock stamp? I don't have one. Oh, you'll need the stamp card. Okay, that's cool. 23 squares. They're divided into sets of 1 to 3 squares of matching colors. Okay, I see. If you collect a set of matching stamps, tell a Moogle who gave you one of those stamps, Koopo. Yes, I got it all. Give me a stamp. Thank you. So there you go. You gotta collect that. You know, all those things. Side quest. Hmm, nobody over here. Okay. I guess I'll just uh, leave this place now. Screw you. Never mind, not screw you. New diary entry. Yeah, so um, the more things you do in this game, the more diary entries you will be getting, you know, and I guess you can read them if you want to, but overall they're not too important. It's just, you know, some like little side story if you want to. But what's over here? Oh, that just leads back up there. Pretty much where the uh, intro scene took place, you know, with that beautiful music in the background. What's this? Another occupation. So yeah, as you can see, my family is the only one who currently lives in this village because I don't have any other families yet. Like, you know, me. So let's leave, and now let's go ahead and talk about the actual things in this game in terms of combat and everything else, you know, which we'll get to in just a bit. So like I said, the goal of this game is pretty much just traveling. You know, uh, you can always see the arrows where you can travel from. Simply move it, and you'll move. And sometimes you can trigger cutscenes like this when you're not in the actual place. When you're at an intersection, you'll probably trigger a cutscene. Usually you do. So, here we go. Hail, fellow caravaner. You are the caravan from CSULB, are you not? I heard they were sending out a new caravan. You seem quite capable. My name is Sol Rocked. I am captain of the caravan from the great fortress of Alphataria. Our caravan boasts a history that stretches back thousands of years. But, let us discuss that some other time. Stiltskin, do you have a moment? This is the caravan from CSULB. Come on, say hello. Allow me to introduce Stiltskin. He may not look like it, but he is a seasoned adventurer. Even we turn to him for counsel from time to time. No, I'm just a Moogle that likes to get around. I learned all sorts of things in my travels before I knew it. I'm on my way somewhere right now, but I can teach you a thing or two if you like. Uh, no, because it's all tutorial stuff which we don't need, so we don't need it. I highly recommend. Uh, I'm fine. Well, I'm sure you will do just fine. By the way, are you settling out all by yourself, Koopo? You've got a lot on your shoulders, Koopo. Let me carry the crystal chalice for you, Koopo. Yes, a capital proposal. Let Mog help you. Be careful out there. You don't want to. You don't want to get in over your head. New diary entry. See another one. So again, it's like the Oregon Trail in a way. You know, these things happen. Diary entries happen. You know, like what happened in this day and so on and so forth. 
It's pretty cool, but I'm not gonna be reading the diary entries in general, really. I will go back and just show you like this one time, but in general, I'm, I'm just gonna skip them. It's a lot of reading, and it's really not that amazing. As you can see, look at that, see? Is this all year one, page one, page two, et cetera, et cetera, you know? And yeah. So here there are two ways to go. I could go left towards another intersection, as you can see, and then eventually left to another place, or I could go right. So if I go left this way, as you can see, now there are three ways to go. Also, one thing to make a note of. If you look in the bottom left corner, it says, in just a second, your current element. Mine says current element fire. That's very important to note sometimes. Very important. Also, in the top left corner, you'll see where it says first year. That is our first year. And you'll also see the name of the current location. Basically, this world is divided into sections. The section we're currently in, the entire thing that you see on the screen, is called the Tiba Peninsula. If I move left, that leads me to Port CSULB. Okay. So it's the port of this town. Again, it's another town thing, sort of, you know? That's cool, I guess. Let's walk down here. Examine. A hole. Hop in. Sure. What the hell is this? Oh, another place. Another little thingy with the side quest. Oh, hello there, dude. Please, dude, give me a stamp. Oh, yeah. I got two stamps now, dude. I got two stamps. Talk? Okay, so... Once you get Mog, this guy's going to be appearing here every single time in these little, you know, the little cute locations. So you can actually paint him if you want to. And you can spray him and stuff, you know, do whatever you want. And he'll actually change color and be like that on the screen, but I'm not going to do this at the moment. Maybe sometime later. So, like, you know, you can paint him red, let's say, and he'll appear red in the actual dungeons with you, which is pretty cool. Okay, so if I go down this way, where does this lead? I don't know where this leads. Let's take a look. The beach. Hey, look, it's you. Uh, no, I'm fine. So, yeah, uh, basically, if you said yes during that one cutscene to get help, you would be taken down here and do, like, a little tutorial thing right here. Or, if you somehow skipped it but then want to do the tutorial again for some reason, you can also go there and talk to Stiltskin once again. Okay, so that's pretty much it here. Okay, not much else to talk about there. Let's go over here to the right side. I don't know what's over here. Oh, that just leads- wait, what? Did they both lead back to the same location? One second, let's go back in there again. And this time go to the right side. Sorry, left side. Yeah, okay, they both lead to the same place. So that's pretty much it. Just a tutorial at the bottom and then the little cave for the side quest with a stamp, which I did. Okay. So... I want to show you another thing. If you keep going forward... Do you see this? It says the Miasma Stream. To get from one location to another in this game, and like I said, each location, each section is pretty much what you see on the map right now. So to get from Tipa Peninsula to the next section of the game, you would have to be able to cross this Miasma Stream, but only if you have the water element. The blue there is the water element. If you have the fire element, you can't cross. You have to switch your elements. So how do you switch? Good question. You actually switch by doing actual dungeons. I skipped this temporarily so I can just talk about other things first, but this right here, Riverbell Path. First dungeon. You can tell it's a dungeon if you see a mer tree. That little tree there right above, north of where it says river, that's a mer tree. If the tree is shining green like how it is right now, it means that there's currently a mer drop available in that tree. If it's faded and gray, it means that there's currently, what the hell is that sound? Some machine in the background, sorry. If it's currently grayed out, it means that there's currently no uh, mer drop in that tree. Also, for any dungeon in the game that has a tree, you can always see what elements are available within that dungeon. There's a water element available and there's a wind element available, so you can switch to either of those if you actually find the proper element within the stage. So, I'm gonna do it. I'm for sure gonna have to switch to water, but also clear the dungeon as well. So. That is going to be for next time, though, because uh, I'm already at 20 minutes. Well, you know what? I'll just go ahead and enter the level. How about that? I'll enter it and then just end it. So there's going to be a little um, dialogue with actual voice acting, yes. They say that wicked creatures prowl the road along this beautiful riverbank, but nobody's ever seen one. I once asked a man why. He simply replied, because anybody who happens upon one is promptly eaten. 
But it is long since anyone has met such a fate. For nowadays, people take another route, far away from the spooky old road. Only we walk the old way now. Travelers in crystal caravans. And this right here is the first technically dungeon of the game. Riverbell Path, everyone. Riverbell Path. Okay. So, just simply press ready when you're ready to take on the dungeon, and here we go. But that's gonna be for next time, of course. So next time I will be talking about... Well, he looks so funny carrying this shit. Let's just drop it. <laughs> okay. So next time, I will be talking about the combat system in this game and pretty much everything about dungeons. So yeah, stay tuned, everyone. So if you enjoyed this episode in any way, Please be sure to leave a like, I would appreciate that very much, thank you, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.